Thank you, Wally. What a beautiful selection of praise songs this morning. You touch me, it's quite, you do touch us with your music. Good morning. Good morning. Spring is coming, slow but sure. Uh, now, we have a consistory meeting Wednesday, Wednesday at 7. That's good. One more class. Any other announcements? Yes, Deborah. We're going to have the Helping Hands Car Wash Spring Fundraiser. And it will begin next, not tomorrow, but the following Monday and run through Friday, April 30th. So come next Monday, you can go in and buy your car wash tickets for spring. Your St. Patrick's Day car wash tickets. That was a, that sounds like a any others? Well, prayer concerns. It is with great sadness that I announced the passing of March Barron. March passed away Thursday, March 4th. March will be greatly missed, but she is at peace with the Lord. Her family will have a graveside service in the spring to be announced. So please keep her family in your thoughts and prayers. It will be, uh, Marge has been sick for a while, but it's still sudden. So keep the family in your prayers. Any others? In that case, it is always it is my pleasure to introduce Reverend Barbara Morgan to lead us in worship today. Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm hoping that everything will be okay this morning because it looks like yeah, there it is. I did this the other day for a funeral. I tried to get it going, and I think I blasted everybody out of the funeral because it was so bright. There, we got it. Again, good morning. morning. It's good to be here. And look at the sun out there. It's happening. It's going to come. Spring will its way, I hope, but not soon enough. Uh -huh. We begin our worship this morning with these words, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. All wise and all loving God. We are drawn, drawn together in this place today because of our knowledge and our discernment. And we know it's not enough to give meaning to our lives. All the pieces of our busy days need to center, and we have come to see that center as being the center of the cross. Their love went, in, it went the full distance for us. There the path of service was lifted up above our passion for personal gain. We are frightened by what you might ask of us, O oh Lord, but we long for the whole here we go. The wholeness only you can give. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our leader. Together, let us read our call to worship. The heavens are filled, telling the glory of God. The firmament proclaims God's handiwork. We celebrate the steadfast love of Christ, our Creator. Surely God is faithful to all the living and the good. From the sun's rising to its setting, creation speaks. Day and night, earth's creatures announce God's work. The commandments of God are clear. The light in the eyes of God's law is perfect. Calling her paradise. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The ordinance of God are true and righteous in following God. And now Wally will
The psalmist declared that our souls are revised by God's perfect law. We are comforted by that law today, confronted by that law today, at the center of the love of God's revelation in Jesus Christ. It is more desirable than all the gold in the world. Let us confess those things in our lives that keep us from realizing that love. Let us pray. Merciful, Merciful God, God, you pardon, pardon all who repent and return, return to you. We, we humbly, humbly confess, confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have, we have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, O oh God, in your loving kindness, in your great compassion, cleanse us from our sins, creating us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast, cast us from your presence, presence or take, take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Amen. Having confessed our sin, we know that our prayers that are more pious than words When prayers become more the pious words, when in all before God we truly seek forgiveness, the Almighty becomes for us a guiding presence. We are healed, strengthened, and set free from our slavery to sin. In steadfast love, God claims us, saying, you are my people. Dare to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, for in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. And knowing that we are forgiven, we ask, how shall we then live? And we hear the words of Jesus saying, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. <laughs> Justice and peace, 
guide those who make and administer our laws, to build a society based on trust and respect, erase prejudices that oppress, free us from crime and violence. Look with compassion on all who suffer. Support with your love those with incurable and stigmatized diseases, those un unfairly imprisoned, those who live without hope, as you have come toward us in love, let us be present with them in their suffering. Sustain those among us who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole. Give hope to the dying. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may know the peace and joy of your supporting care. Let us honor the past and look forward with a sure hope so that the fires of hatred are transformed into flames of love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us for our debts, as we, as we forgive our debtors. We are not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Wow. This music gets better as the one that goes on, so let's see what it does now. Ferris, Lord Jesus, is my family.
Precious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts, that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, make us hunger for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. Hear the word of the Lord. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. To us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through the wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand songs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to, the, to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called both Jews and Gentiles, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Even when we have it all together, I don't. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. The early Christians in Corinth struggled. The area was populated with both Greeks and Jews, and both found the Christian beliefs ludicrous. The Greeks were bound by logic and financial success. The Jews looked to the law and awaited liberation and return to their chosen status. Both Jews and Greeks looked at the outward signs, looked at the things that they could see. Your Jewish leaders preached the law, but they preached the law with such detail that anything you did that was against the law, no matter how minor it was, it was, it was impossible to keep the law. There were just too many facets of the law, too many things. And it was that paper and those written principles that they wanted you to believe in. And here Jesus was. He had lived in their midst, and he died. He then brutally killed, crucified, for crimes of blasphemy and sedition, nailed to a cross, an instrument of torture between two condemned criminals. The cross was the ultimate symbol of death and defeat. It was an embarrassment. How could the Christians call him their savior? According to the world, it made no sense at all. The Christians were laughed at, scoffed, ridiculed, and persecuted. But Paul encouraged the Christians to stand firm. Those of the world were looking for God in all the wrong places. The power of the cross had turned the world upside down. Paul reminded them of the message of Isaiah, where the wise were, where the wisdom of the wise was frustrated and the intelligence of the intelligent turned up, turned upside down. Ooh. But I think Paul missed the mark when he was trying to make them understand, because that verse, the verse that we quoted in the gospel in the lesson this morning, seems to make an awful lot more sense when you look at the verse before it, which says, these people come near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts 
are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules. They have been taught. Christian thought is different, and it brought them back to the words of Isaiah. The Christians believe in the wonder of Christ and the power of God. They believe that Christ crucified has forgiven their sins and made them right with God. The cross has turned the world upside down. And wisdom? What good is all the knowledge in the world if you cannot see God at work? You can read the laws and spend so much time studying them and enforcing them that you fail to see what the laws were intended to do in the first place. Christ had lived among them. Those who accepted his teachings and those who denied his teachings did not read them. Those who accepted his teachings and those who relied on his teachings did not rely on words. Christ led them by example. Christ led by living his lessons. The early Christians had learned by seeing, learned by example. They believed that he had lived among them, died for them, and had risen to rejoin his Father. He had traveled the cross for them and for us, and left the cross as a sign of his love and the power of God. Christ had turned the world upside down, or perhaps maybe he'd really turn the world right side up. As the Christians struggled together, they were unified <coughs> in their faith, and the love of God sustained them and held them there. What seemed foolish to the world made perfect sense to them. When Christ had what Christ had taught became the very essence of their lives. They certainly weren't rich and powerful by the world's standards, but together, they had life abundant. How? By showing God's righteousness, God's grace, and allowing God's grace to flow through them. They could preach the gospel, share the good news, not with words, but by sharing the faith of what God had done for them. They were meek. They were not strong. They were poor in spirit, but burned for justice. Jesus had led the way. They didn't have all it all together, but together they had it all. They reached not to higher levels, but down to the ground that Jesus had trod. In compassion and service, they drew closer to the cross and to one another. There is nothing stronger than the teachings of Jesus, nothing stronger than a Lord who sacrifices himself for us. In the past year, we've watched our world turn upside down once more. Right seem to be forever on the cross, and the worldly values seem to continue on. Expectations that we have always had, things that we had taken for granted, changed in an instant. Suddenly, what had been the powerful was so no longer. What was essential was now what we believed that was necessary and important. We looked at grocery store clerks instead of executives, shelf stockers instead of, instead of what? <laughs> and, and then we also looked toward the emergency workers. In other words, we looked at people that we hadn't considered to be people of any significance in the past. But those who have had the powerful positions, those who seem to be in a place of glory, weren't there anymore. Because what we needed, what was real, was to be down in the trenches. And the things that were most important to us suddenly became much more visible. At times, it's difficult not to see all the world, all the world, through the eyes of the rich and the famous and the Jews and the Greeks. But we always have that cross before us, and Jesus points us all to a better way. The way we can reach out with compassion to the troubled, the poor, and the suffering. 
giving of the time and talent and treasure that God has given us, sharing God's message with our lives, giving of ourselves as mere human imitations of the Christ who led the way for us. The cross is a powerful symbol. It's two distinct pieces joined together. When we look at the cross, that's what we see. We see a top and we see a bottom. When I was ordained, I was given a gift. And I wish I had more hands so that I could show you. But what I was given was a Celtic cross. Now, a Celtic cross not only has the two cross members, but it has a circle that surrounds them. I haven't really studied the meaning of the Celtic cross, the way it was designed, but I have my meaning that I attach to that cross. And I see that circle surrounding the cross as the world. And the world is all of us. And because those four parts seem to come together in the middle, that's what Christ is calling us to be. That's what Christ was. That's what Christ is looking for in each of us. And on my Celtic cross, right in the middle, the middle of the circle, the middle of the cross, is one tiny red stone. To me, that's the heart. The heart of our faith, the heart of Christ, the heart of all that we are called to be. Don't worry, I'm here. I've lost my, I've lost my train. Um, that's what we're looking for. That's where we want to be. I was, I was working on this particularly last night and this morning, actually in the morning, in the middle of the night, because I was thinking of this. I had another thought. And I thought, you know, if I had this thought in the beginning, I could have saved this all an awful lot of time. You may have heard it. Uh, I looked it up to get the exact wording this morning. I was kind of tickled with some of the things that were being said about it. The message, and it's attributed to St. Francis, but not necessarily know that it was St. Francis, was preach the gospel at all times use words when necessary. That's a horrible thing for me to stand up here and say after I've given you all these words. But that is the message of the cross. God doesn't need our words. God needs our lives. God needs the way we live our lives to point towards him, to reach towards him. That's the heart of the cross. That's the heart of our message. That's the heart of our belief. Trust in God, believe, and share with others. Amen. Now to the one who by the power within us is able to do far more than all we can ask or imagine to God be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. life eternal. In the cup of blessing, 
He comes to us as a vine in which we are to abide, we are to be healed and saved. We come here believing that this bread and this cup are a foretaste of the feast of love which we shall partake when his kingdom has fully come, when with unveiled faces we may behold him and made like him in all his glory. Since by his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ obtained for us the life-giving spirit which unites us all in one body. So also are we to receive this supper in true love, mindful of the communion of the saints. All those who have confessed their faith in Jesus Christ and are members of the Christian church are welcome at the Lord's table. Come. All things are ready. The Lord Jesus, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is in our joyful duty to give thanks to you, O Lord, our, <coughs> our Creator, Almighty and Everlasting God. You created heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. You have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ. The eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior, which has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O Lord. With your whole church on earth and all the company of heaven, we worship and praise you, your glorious name, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Most merciful God, we remember in the supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and the expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of our great of our Savior. Grant that being joined together in Him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up into all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup. Grant, O Lord, that we may come from the ends of the world, earth into your presence, even now. Come, Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is our communion in the body of Christ.
is our communion in the body of Christ. Since we have been fed at his table, let us now give thanks to our Lord for all that we have. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your distress, who redeems us from the pit, who crowns us with steadfast mercy. The Lord is merciful and just slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor requite us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the steadfast love of those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. But the Father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who love him. Who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, and will give us all things through him. Therefore, shall my mouth and heart show forth the praise of our Lord Jesus Christ from this time forth forevermore. Amen. And Molly is going to play for us.
Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness.